Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, colleagues. And um, let me say that I'm extremely happy to stand in this chamber this morning and um, to make my contribution to brief, of course, on the estimates of, ex of expenditure and revenue. But of course, I think it would be remiss of me, Mr. Speaker, if I did not take some time to attend just two important matters. Firstly, Mr. Speaker, I would like to express my deepest condolences to the family of Rufus Kodra, who passed away a few weeks and whose funeral was on Monday. He was a celebrated gentleman who served this country for, my, for many years as an educator. I had the distinct pleasure to, to visit Mr. Kodra a few months ago, where he shared with me his thoughts on many developmental subjects. I was also happy and can report how passionately and proudly he spoke of his children. And I'm not surprised of the achievement and how well they too are serving in St. Lucia and the people in the education sector as well. Mr. Speaker, allow me to express gratitude to the many persons who reached out to me and my family during my recent ailment. From the minute I felt the discomfort on that faithful Sunday up to now, so many persons have prayed for me and continue to pray for me. As much as I would like to single out everyone, I fear I may unintentionally leave out a name or two. So just please permit me to thank a few groups of individuals. And if in case I left out anyone, I do apologize. Firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Daniel and the staff, the people at the Tapia Hospital for their effective care. My Prime Minister, Cabinet colleagues, members and staff of the Parliament, members of the St. Lucia Labour Party, members of the Opposition, the many members of the Castri South East constituency, the staff of the Ministry of Equity and its supporting agencies, my family, my in-laws, friends, well-wishers and supporters throughout the length and breadth of St. Lucia and in the diaspora the medical team in Laminade Hospital in Martinique, and Professor Dabo. I also would like to thank the special lady of Miss Alison Joseph, our Consul General in Martinique, for support. And in a special way, whereas I've spoken to my family, I would like to single out my sister and her husband in Martinique, my cousins, and all my friends who reside in Martinique for coming by and supporting. In a special way, the Petitans SDA Church, my mother's home church in Martinique, as well as some of the churches in Martinique who came by, provide support and prayed with me. The Therefore SDA Church and all of the churches in Castries Southeast in particular prayed with me and made representation one way or the other. Mr. Speaker, upon assuming responsibility as minister, I did not hesitate but to convene meeting with the Christian Council and all of the established religions on this island. And I'm happy to report that all of the leaders of these various organizations, our faith-based organizations, reached out and said and gave me the praise and they provided support. I wish to thank them. My dear wife Marcy and my loving daughters for the unwavering love and support. You know, I cannot, words are not sufficient to speak to the support that I got from them. And finally, to God the giver of life, all praises belong to Him. And I want to assure the people of Castro South is that I will continue to serve them with what is left of my heart. Um, for as long as God determines, I will serve the people of Castro South East. 
sometimes, Mr. Speaker, just to reflect, and just before the occurrence of what transpired on that Sunday, I recall speaking to my wife and I said to her that if I am terminally ill while I am serving this in this parliament, it will not be a secret and I do not want it to be anything that is of fear. I told her I would face the people and tell them exactly what is going on. And if the doctor gave me days, I told her I will communicate to the constituents and to St. Lucians on a whole how much time I'm given. The end of life is not to be happy nor to achieve pleasure, as Martin Luther said, but is to do God's will come with me. And for this, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for indulging me. On the motion before this House, Mr. Speaker, I wish to join this Parliament and to register my support for the estimates of revenue and expenditure in the sum of one billion eight hundred and fifty six million seven hundred and nine thousand seven hundred seven hundred and nineteen thousand. Mr. Speaker, I am particularly pleased with the increase I noted in for the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment. And I wish to highlight that overall, for the period 2020 to 2023, we received 61 million in the estimates, five, $513,000 this year in the budget presented for 2023, 2024 there's an increase to $76,503,900. The areas that I need to, that, of, that is of importance to me and that requires focus is one area, and I will speak in details when it gets to the policy debate, is a graduation and an allocation for graduation for persons on public assistance. Mr. Speaker, this is very important for the government and for the people of St. Lucia and for taxpayers. It's important to note, Mr. Speaker, that while we have allocated annually, we continue to allocate $20 million to support people on public assistance. We do have on a waiting list 1,500 persons, that was as of last year. But it's not worrying for me, but it's important to note that this, num this number has increased to 2,300 persons on a waiting list. The allocation for graduation, for graduation for, or to allow persons to exit public assistance through training, through investment, would assist significantly in allowing persons who need to be on public assistance get on while we continue to move persons who are able to do otherwise. So I support the amount given and it's a new, it's new that's not been done in the past and I'm happy that this Prime Minister is thinking of our vulnerable population by making this allocation. The second area of support under the Ministry of Equity, though it was a small amount, it is for persons with disabilities. I listened to my colleague member who spoke about farmers, persons with disability trying to enter the agricultural business. But importantly, Mr. Speaker, we have not provided thorough analysis of disability or persons living with disabilities on this island. And I believe that this financial year we will embark to do a thorough study to provide support to the organization with or to work with them so that we can have a database and understand disability in, its, in the manner in which it needs to be understood. I am extremely happy that this year, while I was on the hospital bed in Martinique, I noticed that we received a container of wheelchairs 
from our Taiwanese and I was extremely blessed and um, I celebrated this um, a container of wheelchairs is also um, while while returning here um, on Sunday a friend a friend provided me with two motorized wheelchair which will be delivered I took them to St. Lucia and will be delivered to the Donata school because there are some children there are some children who cannot be in the regular wheelchairs I wasn't working I wasn't working I wasn't working <laughs> yeah but I'm happy that they would be receiving these two important wheelchairs and of course I was able to get some medication which I will hand over to the Minister of Health to provide some support to the senior people with disability, again gifts. So I welcome gifts that helps to augment the resources that we are receiving in the budget so that we could impact our vulnerable population. Another area that receives support, and I was extremely happy in this estimate, is the establishment of a juvenile center. Mr. Speaker, you would have, everybody is aware of what is happening at the Boys Training Center. And for the government, for the Prime Minister to have allocated resources so that we could commence the designing so that by next year we could realize the implementation of a juvenile detention center for caring and protection of our young people, I think is timely and I welcome this tremendously. Another area of investment that was not supported before, community development, receiving three quarters of a three quarters of a million dollars for after school program. That has not happened in the past. It was not funded. And I'm happy in the context of what we are faced with that our prime minister can find resources so that we can now embark on having after school program in our various communities so that our children are engaged. Mr. Speaker, the estimate reflects a philosophy of our prime minister who understands that we are not there to just to respond to crime and violence or to consider that communities are important only when things bad happen. But the Prime Minister understands that when our communities are peaceful, we need to go in, cultivate, encourage, and consolidate the good things in our community that we do not allow it to become places fested with crime and these ills. So this investment made in the estimates under the Ministry of Equity, I think is very profound, it's deep, it's timely, and will only make, contribute significantly to the well-being of our vulnerable population. Mr. Speaker, let me briefly speak of the Castri Southeast constituency and how the estimates will impact them. Mr. Speaker, I'm of the opinion that any constituency can best be served if they are organized, and this applies even more in a large or large constituencies. The absence of functioning development committees and unselfish community leaders is necessary for effective representation in a people-focused development. Mr. Speaker, it happened that I was given oversight of the Ministry of Community Development. And of course, Mr. Speaker, I recognize that volunteerism is not as popular as it used to be before. This makes community development more difficult, and it makes management of a constituency even more difficult. I am not, and I've said it before, I'm not there to compete with those who have served before me, but to try to make a contribution to the development of the people that I represent. And this means, to some extent, the completion of projects that are in the best interest of the people. Mr. Speaker, the context of how we, this budget will serve the constituency, one must understand what is the situation of Castries Southeast currently. 
I need to report, Mr. Speaker, that following the works of the former MP, there are a number of incomplete infrastructural projects in Castro Southeast. In fact, I ask whether it's a blessing or a curse, but in the last year of elections, road work started in Mark Capitol Hill, you had Lower Belle, Forest, Jess, Sandy Fee, and a lot of those projects were left unfinished. And by nature has created a demand to have them completed. While there are other needs that needs to be addressed and it is difficult. The Odsa HR, HRDC, I'm happy that it is completed now. The Bexo HRDC is still ongoing under the DVRP project. And of course, you would still have a situation of viewing a series of containers on the banks of the river in Bexo, which I have difficulty in completing or doing anything about it. I'm hoping that we could find some way to resolve that problem of what the intention of, con of, of all those containers meant previously. Additionally, I need to inform the Minister of Housing that the proud project which started previously have left some areas in Bexor incomplete. Some people are unhappy, some of the designs, and it is, it was, this was not under the auspices of the, of the current minister responsible for Proud, but he inherited it, design and work were ongoing. And Mr. Speaker, if you were to visit some parts of Bexo, the incomplete nature of the Proud interventions, it is really sad what people are enduring, and of course, it would make you feel unhappy. What we have done, Mr. Speaker, we have established and we have re-energized development committees in Tiroche, Wavin Poisson Labi, Bexo Bele Kulita Kulitown, I understood, is, 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 is ahead. And efforts are being made to continue in this vein, with the assistance from the Social Transformation Officer and part of the development, the Community Development um, Unit of the Ministry of Equity. We have established Young Leaders Clubs in the constituency, and of course I'm happy that the allocation on the community development, which will be used for re-energizing and getting the after-school program, can see these communities active and get our young people participating in developing themselves. Mr. Speaker, the support from the Constituency Development Program provided tremendous support. Understanding the importance of the future of our people and their contribution to a more equitable society, we decided to invest in the development of our children through the engagement of a retired musician. And this is going on well, and we will continue with the CDP in ensuring that our children at preschools in Castro Southeast are exposed to music at a very early age. And this is, this is deliberate, this is purposeful, and of course, as I say this, I am aware that the Dr. Josima Henry Foundation, Musical Foundation, in there for, is doing extremely well, and we have developed quite a bit um, a few string musicians who are now performing and are making the family members, making the churches proud as they continue to serve and develop their skills. All of this musical talent in the Castro office is being nurtured, and I know, I know that when, as jazz is being funded, that the minister responsible for the creative industry will see the need to host jazz in Castro office not to import musicians, but to demonstrate the talent that we have in Castro Southeast. And not to call it Sore. And we will not call it, no, no. They have, we have enough rivers. We have enough rivers. We have enough rivers. We have enough rivers. Um, 
another area that we'll, we'll continue to support under the constituency development program is the transportation of our people. And of course, through the benevolence of the Embassy of the Republic of China and Taiwan, of course, we know we have a 40 seater coaster, thank to the Minister of Local Government for, for handing over the keys to me. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this coaster, whereas we smile, has provided a service for the people of Castro South is in a way that is unprecedented. Mr. Speaker, the driver of this bus happily accepted the job and I'm happy that he asked for it. But since he has taken that role to be the bus driver, I do not think that he has had one day out of work because this bus is on, working through the community, taking children across the constituency on every day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday. And without a root burn. We, <laughs> without a root burn. And it's, it's the, the, the idea recognizing transportation is a public good. And I, I challenge, I challenge other parliamentarians, especially consti um, constituencies like Schrozel and the other larger constituencies where you need to move your people around, where children need to attend to activities within the constituency. You know, the, that coaster has made the people happy. They're using it. It is not color-coded. It is not in red. It will never be an SLP coaster. It is Castries Southeast coaster on the local government. And I, I'm really happy that this decision was taken and the transportation services will continue. Mr. Speaker, Castries South is being the second largest constituency. There's a demand for employment. And a lot of our people are unemployed. While we were able to provide employment for some of our people immediately after elections, they are employed um, through the HOPE program. They are employed on um, providing support at some statutory organizations. Some have found work elsewhere as the economy start to pick up in the tourism. I have registered, based on my own count, that we in Castries Office have been able to see pretty cool, close to more than 70 persons finding employment after elections. But the demands and the needs for employment of our people is significant. And that is why I am happy that the provision made under the CSME, the, 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 the program under the Ministry of Commerce, where small business, um, the idea of having persons to, to be entrepreneurs, young people, the youth economy, that being financed is significant. But of course, the strategy to access and to ensure that certain persons, you know, have access and benefit from these initiatives needs to be, is, need to be very strategic. And that is why in discussion with the Minister for Commerce, I am not just asking for persons from Castries Southeast to go to the Department of Commerce or to go to the youth economy, but I'm using part of my constituency development program to invest in somebody who has the ability to train those persons beyond what the Ministry of Commerce is doing into small business, developing the business plan, and have a relationship with the ministry that it, they can receive approval of the business plan in a very critical way, and that we do not put them through a bureaucratic process that they give up in actually accessing these things. Because when you have bureaucracy in place, our people are hustlers. <coughs> They need to make some money for the day to care for the kids. It's difficult for them to go and sit on a line waiting. And therefore, the idea of getting them or, or, or creating this change, we fail because of the bureaucracy and the fact that our people need to continue to provide it for themselves. So I have decided to use some of the resources on the CDP and to work with the Ministry of Commerce so that our people the names that I have, those persons I see with that are serious about business, I can actually provide them with that kind of psychosocial support, hold their hands, 
and anchor them and do like the former minister do, handcuff them into the business. Minister Frederick did showed me how to do that sometime. Ensure that they stay and perform and they access the services that is needed. Mr. Speaker, an area of support that I'm happy that's funded, and I know the Minister of Housing is that of housing. Of course, we provided some housing support to our people. And I am pleased that we did some housing assistance. But of course, Castry South is, if there's, you could never have enough to serve Castry South is. And therefore, I'm looking for more resources. I'm looking for more support. I'm happy, however, under the SSDF, very soon the Minister for the Minister for, for Infrastructure, Minister um, through the, the, the Department of um, Cronlands, the Minister of Local Government will join to have a small ceremony for the opening of a duplex in Castry Southeast because of course it provides a different arrangement with the church, a third party, Cronlands, ensuring that somebody who is disabled will now find a place to rest their head and the church will be ma maintaining and managing this facility until the person passes on where somebody else will come on board. I find this is novel. It is a very low-cost intervention, and I cannot wait for the ceremony to celebrate this, and of course, that we could replicate it elsewhere throughout St. Lucia once we have a viable third party who is willing to partner with the government and Cronlands. And in that case, it is the Seventh-day Adventist Church who would be participating, and of course, there would be a formal signing of documents so that we register this in Cronlands to understand that it is the property is developed for the church, but it is the government's or crown property, and it is intended to be used for persons who would qualify as persons deserving of this. So I am looking forward to more of this happening in next year's, in this year's budget. As it relates to infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, road safety, we are waiting for the sidewalks in Bexar. We are waiting for the speed bumps in Odsa, Bexo, and in Tuapito. We've had the site visits. We need, we, we cannot allow for another accident in Bexo again and then respond. We must take steps to make this stretch of road coming from the bottom of the Bad Lil, it needs to become safer. We have lost too many lives there, and I'm asking the Ministry of Infrastructure to intervene. We have a situation in Tuapito. There are two churches, and again, vehicles going through Tuapito expect to pass there as if there were planes trying to take off. The people living across, living on the sides of the road, have asked for speed bumps to slow down traffic. A visit has been done by the Ministry of Infrastructure, we are asking that this be considered in this year's, year, this year's budget. As well as the pastor of the Pentecostal Church in Odsa, he too have registered his concern for vehicles coming from Odsa onto the highway. They have had some serious accidents. Vehicles do not slow down and sometimes children are coming from church. We need to have traffic management signs there as well. And I'm happy that the, the member for me could spoke about the envelope that he that he has seen that the minister the minister the minister for infrastructure he has a special envelope and um, and has and has spoken to what fraction of that envelope can lend support to MICOD in terms of roads. Huh? <laughs> Leave for you, okay. I, well, he said it. Well, he didn't. He didn't see it empty. Yeah. Well, I pray God that it multiplies, because um, there are some in this. Again, for me, the road works in in um, Lacroix to Odsa. There was a sign on the the same month of election, but of course there was no resources, or we have not. Res 
we've not found the resources. I would like to see this road since it was started by the previous MP. I would like to see that it completed. I think it's important that we complete projects that are started. We need to finish it. No, no, no. We need to we need to finish it. I have no interest in discontinuing anything. You know, and if, if my recent ailment tell me that you might as well finish it because you'll finish yourself. So we need to finish the roads that has started. There's a massive retaining wall. I'm hoping that in, in Badney that, that has collapsed and it's ex, that situation ex, existing for some time. It's really an nice, so we need to finish it. Drainage, we did some drainage in, um, in the constituency. But Mr. Speaker, a draining castry surface all, every drain seems to be a river or a ravine. And it's not like you could go into a small drain like a, in a low-lying area. It is massive, the nature of the constituency. And therefore, I'm asking that on the, well, the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Program, I know it's coming to an end, but of course, we need to consider drainage as a serious undertaking. We need to scientifically look at how the amount of money that we invest in the silting vis-a-vis -vis what we can do in alleviating some of those problems. So I would like to see the, um, um, while we embark on the West Coast Road, that we address the issue of this major culvert passing at the back of the, of the, um, the daycare center in Kaldisa, because it's very narrow and the water backs up into the community of Kaldisak. And of course, tying that flooding that takes place in the community with the poor sewage system, an old sewage system that was given following, maybe following emancipation when we started practicing subsistence farming in Kaldisak, that sewage system still exists. And whenever it rains, our people in Kaldisak have to deal with flooding of sewage because the water backs up. That cannot allow to exist in Castry Southeast. The flooding in Bexo and Kaldisak, of course, is something that we we're dealing with for a very long time. But the idea of having a new bridge, I think, similar to what the Japanese did, I think that is on the table. We we need to consider the Ferrans Bridge and the Cronlands Bridge at it as soon as possible because we know that we'll deal with the issue of, of um, the infrastructure needs of the constituency. The other area that I have, <laughs> I think the, the Prime Minister has, the Prime Minister has given me everything that I asked for. He's given me everything that I've asked for. The Prime Minister gives. Because the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, well, well, the Prime Minister knows one thing in Christian values. He, it's better to give than to receive. And I need to continue the Prime Minister to en and encourage him to continue giving. Because it's the right thing to do. Not all. Yeah. But um, the issue of community centers for, for, um, for me is so important. And when I speak of community centers, I'm not talking about HRDCs. I personally believe that HRDCs are too lavish. They're too, they're too costly to maintain. I need a place, I need places in the constituency where people can just sit and have a meeting. I do not like to sit in Mark and have a meeting uh, by a rum shop, for example, or to congregate in a rum shop, or a place where it's not conducive for a mother to come and sit with a child. So I'm not asking for HRDCs. I'm asking for basic hall centers where persons can have a conversation. And there's a demand for it. And one, the one that was developed by Gis Industries and was handed over by Gis Industries in Kalisa. We need to spend $800,000 and retrofit it 
and give the people a proper place because that's where the after school program is, be, is being held. That's where they're raising funds for many years. We've cleared the site in Mac. We need a small building that will not take $300,000, $400,000 for us to have our meeting. We need to do this. And of course, anywhere else they can wait down the road. So yes, community centers are important because community centers makes it possible to organize people, engage people so that you could leave development that is people focused. Recreational facilities also are very important for Castro office. The Minister of Sports is not here, but apart from the Becks of playing field and a small ground in Bele, the second largest constituency on the island has no other playing facilities. Think of it. The second largest population of constituency there's only the Bexo playing field and a bare ground. And everywhere else, forest here. No, that's Safa Lewis grounds well fence. That's Safa Lewis, that's not. So there's only Bexo playing field. And when it floods, Bexo playing field is no longer available. There's no other playing field. Abused under the CDP program to light up a small ground in Kalisa, a community ground, where you have people playing sports. And Mr. Speaker, just imagine, there's a small ground almost half the size of a court in Badney. And on afternoon, you would find 100 young men playing small goals. You know, side, what they call side out. And when it's humbling to see so many young men recreating on a small area like this, a private land owner called me from St. Croix and said, hey, I know what's happening on my land, that's okay. <laughs> but there's no place for young people to recreate in Castry Southwest. And it is one of the concerns that I have, and it's a matter that I'll continue to lament, assets per constituency where the population is what is needed and I think that needs to be given consideration. So I'm expecting in this financial year that we can find a court for Kulitam, a multi-purpose court, because the children crossing that highway to go across into the member member for Castry South Court playing field. The older ones can do it, but it is dangerous to see children crossing that highway in Roseau to go across to Marigo to recreate. There's no place in Town for recreation. There's no place in Bad. There's none in, in Mac, Mac producing cricketers. There's none in Four Club. There's none in Kubaril. There's none in Peru. There are 41 communities in Castries Southeast. Bexo and Belle is the only place you could find playgrounds. It is large and it is not served properly. So, Mr. Speaker, this is the nature of life in Castries Southeast. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, I will always try my best to do what I can. As it relates to livelihood, I'm happy that the Minister for Tourism under the um, Community Tourism has now identified Lakwa, what he's, he's not building a hotel. <laughs> but whatever that has been conceptualized, I know will do well for the community of Lakwa in terms of the improvement of what is happening on this, at, at the junction there. And of course, it will improve livelihoods. Yes, I want his land. <laughs> yes, as it relates to um, other forms of livelihood, Mr. Speaker, the national abattoir was destroyed or was abandoned? Was abandoned. Castry South is probably have more butchers than Viewfort. Is that the case? I do not know. But there are many butchers in Castry Southeast. Mark in particular, and you, if you travel through Bexo, 
And the practice for, for slaughter is not healthy, and in 2023, I think is really backward. Also, we need to find place to ensure that these people do not only sell their, 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 their meats in the central market as to how they operate, but we need to create market space for subsistence farming in Castries Southeast. The only land I see available for a market in Castries Southeast, which I hope to pursue, is in Castries South. When you have a lot of flooding taking place in Castries Southeast, like some mighty countries do, what you do, you go and conquer land elsewhere. You know, so I am not looking to go into Ukraine. <laughs> I'm not doing like Mr. Putin. But I'm going to see if I can get land in Castries South to assist people in Castries Southeast. Um, so any territorial dispute, I think the member for Castries South must sit in the context of development, land, and what is happening in larger countries. So, so we need to negotiate that. And I know the Prime Minister, who gives me everything I ask, will give me land in Castries South. <laughs> He will give me land in Castries South to build a market. Um, yeah. <laughs> let me let me not take um, more time here, but to to speak to the issue that, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Equity and the services that it has provide that it provides to people on the island, Castries South is in a serious way has benefited. The burial support that this government has made available to St. Lucians has reached support to many persons. The medical support that persons receive, I see every now and then someone from Castro South is benefiting. On behalf of the constituency of Castro South, is, I wish to express my thanks to the Prime Minister for this budget, what he has done in the past, and what he continues to do. And of course, I know that modern food vouchers, modern the assessment or the need for a new juvenile and detention center for caring for our young people. What I see out of this budget is caring and not the occasional attitude towards giving something when there's a problem. But in this budget, streams a flow of care that is continuous that will outlive this any government that comes into power so the concern and for our people in this budget like i said it's not occasional putting people first is not just a doctrine it is what we believe in what we have been doing what we continue to do and what, we, what our people will experience from henceforth as St. Lucia moves to become a better place for all its citizens. Thank you very much, every one of you.